All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing really well. I'm up and about today because we're going to be hitting 7,000 YouTube subscribers this week. And I'm going to do a giveaway. We've got the Adidas Yeezy Boost 350 V2s, thanks to eBay. eBay sent me these last year, and uh, they're a US men's size 8, not quite my size. I figured I'd pass them on to one of you guys for uh, showing the support of the channel. So to enter the draw to win the Yeezys, all you need to do is comment the word genius down below in this video. Like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. You're gonna have to do that for the three videos that I published this week, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. So if you can do that, you'll be in the draw to win the Adidas Yeezy Boost 350s. So really sick pair of shoes. Um, thanks so much for your support, guys. Let's get into the video. Massive episode ahead. Hope you're looking forward to it. We're gonna do a few things today. I'm gonna jump into the weekend sales that have come through. I'm gonna show you these numbers in just a second. And we're also gonna jump into the February numbers as well. I wanna show you what 10 listings a day can actually achieve for your own reselling business if you can stick with it. Consistency pays, guys. Um, all right, let's jump into it. Let's pull the numbers up. 22 items have sold over the weekend period. Total revenue of 807 bucks. Take out fees, post, cost of goods. Guys, $377 we made selling stuff on eBay. It still blows my mind every single day. Let's go jump into the first category. I'll show you what's sold. Let's have a look at the DVDs. We had a total of seven sales come through in the media section, $200 worth of revenue, and that works out to an average sale price of $28. Let's kick it over here with Mr. Bill Cosby. The entire collection here, an absolutely ripping item to be finding in the thrift. Paid the $15 for it, sold it for 80 bucks. So that one's just a big win. Uh, the Crocodile Hunter, Steve Irwin. Finding Steve in the thrift is always a good day. Picked him up on Thursday's trip to the thrift episode. A dollar each I've paid. We've got a $22.50 sale price. So that one's just a big win. Any form of Steve Irwin's going to do well. Uh, Duck Dynasty, seasons five, six, and seven. This one was a cracker as well. Found it for a dollar a piece. Sold it for 20 bucks within a few days. Mr. Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars. This one was a dollar in the thrift, sold it for $18.50. Matthew McConaughey as well for Lone Star. That one sold for $12.50. And then we've got a couple of Ratchet & Clank uh, video game series games here. So the PS3, a crack in time. That one sold for $28. And then we've got Gladiator as well. That one there sold for $18. So guys, I'm really stoked about this. A $28 average sale price in media. Very, very surprising from when I first started sourcing to think that you can get this top dollar for these sorts of items. But before we move on though, guys, I do just really want to quickly show you the postage as to how I send out my media. It's probably the question that I get asked the most on my Instagram and my YouTube. If we start with the single discs, just the standalone DVDs, every single day of the week, I'm using one of these, um, the Australia Post tracked envelope. And you could go a little bit cheaper and not have it with tracking. There are just plain envelopes out there, but I just like to provide tracking with every single sale. So my single DVDs, my single video game sales, they go into this guy right here. Uh, and then say it's multiple. So say it's um, you know two to five DVDs, for instance. That I'm always gonna put into a small flat rate satchel from Australia Post. And here, here's a perfect example here with Steve. So I just wanna limit the movement um, that you're gonna get in transit. So I'm gonna put a light film of bubble wrap around this one here, and I'm just gonna slide it into the satchel. That's it. So very, very simple. You can get up to five DVDs into a small satchel. That one there should cost me $7.50. And then the big guys, the box sets, like Bill Cosby that we've just sold today. I've played a bit of arts and crafts this morning and I've just cut a box that's perfectly fit uh, for, for Mr. Cosby to go into here. So you could put a light film of bubble wrap around it. In this case, it's so compact that I just don't think there'll be any issues with the postage of this one. So I've just slid him in there perfectly and he'll go off completely fine. So I always like to box the box sets, if that makes sense. And then we'll do the, the satchel as well for the multiples and then we'll do the envelope for the singles. So hopefully that answers that question. We had one sale in the hat section come through. So I was really stoked to get it. We actually had this Brixton hat. So sold for $34.95. So a really good sale price here. It's typically the way that I'm doing my hats. Um, I was actually wearing this one for a little bit. So I am disappointed to see it go. But Brixton's a great brand. Hats are a good category to be selling. $34.95 off a $4 purchase in the thrift. I thought that was pretty good. As for the shoe category, we just had the one sale come through this weekend. It was pretty good Monday to Friday, and then things just slowed up Saturday, Sunday. But this one did come through, a pair of head ski boots. I actually didn't know what size it was for a very long time, and I only got around to listing it up uh, over the Christmas period. So it's taken about six weeks to sell. We got an $80 sale price for it, which I think is pretty good when I bought it for $10 in a thrift store. Whenever I see these shoes, I'm always looking for around about the $80 to $100 worth of resale value. So I'm not surprised that that's what we're able to get for this one here. Postage, it's always a concern for most people with big, large, heavy items, but that one should move for about $20 worth of postage. So 10 into 80 with 20 bucks postage, I thought was good. 
Now, as for the clothing, we've done okay. I've had four sales come through here. Um, a pair of track pants, two pairs of shorts, a pair of jeans. The Wrangler Stretch, these are the Texas Stretch. We've got 35 bucks on those ones there, which look, I thought was okay. I haven't done a hell of a lot of denim sales of late, so let's get that one for 35 was good. A pair of very old basketball shorts. The brand is And One. I sold it for 25 bucks. I probably wouldn't buy that one again. Um, these feeler shorts as well, again, just a brand that I don't normally pick up. So definitely probably don't go looking for that too quickly in the thrift uh, yourself, but $25 for that one. And then a pair of Nike uh, track pants, sold that for $35 too. So um, look, Nike's always great, Wrangler's always great, but these ones here, I'm just happy to see them go. Had a total of six sales come through in the tops and the tees. This sullen uh, tattoo artist t-shirt I thought was really cool in the thrift. Paid about six bucks for it. Um, there was some really good comps on eBay actually for the brand Sullen, so didn't know much about it. Just like I said, like the look of it. Got a really long sell through rate on this one here, which is why I'm not doing the tees so much anymore. Uh, a $25 sale price on that one there. Another one that sat in my store for over a year now, this Apple t-shirt that I found in the thrift for five bucks. Got it done for $30. I did have it priced up a little bit higher than that. Uh, again, a best offer got the job done. So make sure you are doing your best offers, guys. Uh, this one here, a slightly shorter turnaround on a sell-through rate perspective, a size 2XL Shimano fishing shirt. So Shimano is just a really great brand that I'll always look out for. This one definitely has some wear on it, but we were still able to get a $30 sale price for that one there, which I thought was great. Here was a double sale, which is always good from the sense of the postage cost. Um, I've got two t-shirts done for the Golden State Warriors. Uh, Kevin Durant, so there it is there. Uh, just a training tee, nothing fancy about it. Durant on the back, even though he's not there anymore and he's playing in Brooklyn, uh, these tees have still been able to move. So $55 for two training t-shirts that I picked up for seven bucks a piece. 14 in a 55, that was actually a really good sale. And then the best of the bunch, you guessed it, another piece of sporting merchandise with the old school Cricket Australia jersey, the old ACB. If you can see that ACB logo, that tells you that it's a bit a bit older than most. Um, so this one here was an absolute cracker. Picked it up for $5 in the thrift and we've sold it for 65 bucks on eBay. So there you go, guys. 22 items that sold over the weekend. Hopefully, you can go out and find a few of those yourself. I did want to break down my numbers for the entire month of February. Now that we've wrapped up the month, I thought I'd go through the numbers just to show you what listing up 10 items every single day can do for your own reselling business if you think you can get to that level. So we're going to jump into it now. I'm going to show you these numbers. And the first thing we're going to look at is the gross revenue. And if we pull that table up, you'll see that I've been able to sell 209 items. And I've listed 290, so the sell-through rate there is about 75%, which is really brilliant. I wanna aim for 65%, so we're well overs in that regard. Total revenue of $8,171, which was an average sale price of pretty much where I want it to be, $39.10, and I'm shooting for 40 bucks, so I was pretty happy with that one. And then the cost of goods that we had go on to sell was $1,225, so, a profit margin when you take out fees, postage, cost of goods, all the rest of it, we're working on about 45% of the money that I bring in. And I kind of use that figure when I'm doing my trip to the thrift and I'm saving for the USA holiday. It's anywhere between sort of 45 to 50% of a true take home off my 90 day total, for instance. So that's a good look at my gross revenue. If we have a look at the actual fees that you've got to pull out of it, uh, there was $1,422 worth of eBay fees for the month. Uh, the postage cost as well worked out to 1,716. So my total fees that do need to come out of this game of eBay is $3,139. So the items purchased, when we take a look at the inventory, which is I guess another really big consideration, how much are you actually purchasing? Not so much of what's gone on to sell, but what are you actually forking out from a cash flow perspective? Well, I bought 248 items in the month of February. The gross purchase price was $1,772. So I'm pretty content with that because it's only about $7 per item. So um, that's why I guess the uh, the revenue is able to generate around that $40 average sale price because I'm picking it up for seven and I'm generally flipping it for about 40 bucks. I'm content with that. So. Inventory, not too bad. I would have liked to have bought a few more items because I don't really have too much of a death pile. So therefore, what I've been able to source is pretty much everything that I've been able to list. And I probably needed to find a few more items this month to get my average up to 15 listings a day, which is where I want it to be. So that could probably grow a little bit. I'd probably like to aim for 300 items every single month, but 248, I prefer to be picky and choosy rather than just taking any old item that I can get my hands on these days. Um, and the other one is then my paycheck. So when you take out the fees, the post, the cost of the goods off that total revenue target, uh, my, my gross paycheck from eBay in the month of February was $3,800. Now that doesn't take into account the tax 
and the GST considerations that also need to be pulled out of it. But if you were looking at it from a full-time job perspective, works out to about $45,000 a year. So I'm really happy with that. That doesn't take into consideration a few sales that I've made on my Instagram. It does not take into account um, Facebook Marketplace where I've had a couple of furniture sales this month. And it also doesn't account into the revenue that I'm making through this YouTube channel and making these educational videos for you guys out there. So um, I'm really content with the, the income and the earnings that I'm doing. I am putting in a lot of hours, but I have been touching on the fact that I am also trying to take a bit of work-life balance as well. So. Uh, to bring in 3.8 from eBay and, and to grind away and make a few dollars on YouTube as well. Um, I'm sitting pretty, I'm pretty content about it. I think the, the thing that I'd like to grow on in the month of March is obviously to keep making the videos because that is that is truly my focus is actually to try and grow this YouTube channel. I'm pretty content to keep the numbers where they are from an eBay perspective. Um, I just need to continue to work away and try to make the best videos that I can possibly make. And that actually takes up quite a bit of time. So. Um, I'm gonna keep doing that for the month of March. Hopefully these numbers can stay there and thereabouts because at the moment I'm, I'm pretty content. So that'll just about do it guys. Appreciate you watching. Hopefully you've got something out of it. Remember to comment the word genius down below, like the video, subscribe to the channel for your chance to win the Yeezy Boost 350s. If you missed last week's episode of A What Sold and you wanted a few more ideas of what to look for to sell for your eBay business, I'm gonna leave you with this video right here. My 30% clubbers that stick around to the end, you guys are the absolute best guys. We'll see you on Thursday for a trip to the thrift.